Hello, fellow human. Welcome back to another Dank to our slash choosing beggars. We have eight stories in total for you guys today. The first story is posted by you slash Captain Spock with a title of Is This Your Wi Fi? I'm an international student who moved into off campus housing. It is an apartment complex with studio apartments, single tenants occupied by almost exclusively students at the university a couple of minutes away. The day after I moved in, a guy choosing beggar CB knocked on the door. Following was the interaction. Me. Hello. CB. Show me his phone. Is this your Wi-Fi? Me. Confused. Uh, yes? CB. Is it fast? Me. Uh, I guess it is 60 megabit per second. CB. Looking happy. All right. Me. Still confused. CB. Okay, give me the password. Me. What? I don't even know your name or who you are. CB, I'm CB from downstairs. Give me your Wi-Fi password. Me, uh, I'm sorry, no. CB, but my friend used to live here before you and he let me use his Wi-Fi. Me, I'm sorry, I can't. CB, XYZ, previous tenant moved out a week ago and I haven't had Wi-Fi. Give me your password. Me, I'm sorry, but the answer is still no. I need my entire bandwidth because I'm work from home and I need private network for my research. CB gives me stink eye. You have 60 megabit per second and can't even let me use it? Stop being selfish! Me, uh, first of all, you didn't even ask me politely or offer to share the cost. And even if you had done that, as I explained, I can't share my network due to privacy concerns. That's it. The answer is still no and that's final. Bye! I closed the door to his face. I see him walk away after a few seconds of standing at my door, fiddling with his phones, trying out passwords? There's no way he could. Guess cause he had not even asked for my name, let alone random generated password. I had put in a strong password and MACID filter. Basically I need to approve the device before I can connect even with my password. So I knew there was nothing to worry about. I saw him every now and then for the next semester and he gave me the stink eye like I stole his dog or something. After that semester, he moved out and I never saw him again. <laughs> wow, just get your own Wi-Fi, dude. It's not that hard, people. On to the second story written by you slash love to snooze. Give me your laptop, not my laptop. Since you have two, one is my wife's. So I work in IT, web dev stuff, so I know my way around a PC and my neighbors know this. And a week ago or so, one of them comes to my door and says that they had bought a laptop but wasn't starting up. I told her that I don't really know laptop hardware and only open up PCs so I can look but if something is wrong with the software, I can probably fix it. But if it's hardware, then she would need to go to a shop. I invite CB to enter because I want to get it over instantly and not to have to go to drop her laptop off at her house. I turn it on, nothing, not even a light, nothing works. The charging light is on but the laptop is dead. I told her she would have to go to a shop because this is not a software issue. She mumbles but leaves without saying thanks. Which I didn't really care really, I just wanted my peace and quiet. Then yesterday, she rings the door and I open and there she is with the laptop in hand. I will paraphrase the conversation. CB, her, M, me, CB. I just got back from the store and they said the motherboard is dead. Me, uh, sorry to hear that. It's a shame. Can't you get a rev? CB cuts me off. No, I want to ask about your laptops. Uh, me, okay, what about mine? CB. Can you give me one of them? I need it for my kids. They don't have anything to play on. Me. Uh, no, I can't give you a laptop because that is my work laptop bought and paid from the company I work at. It's not mine. CB. Oh, come on. Just tell them you lost it or someone stole it. <laughs> Me. I would get fired if that happened. Really would. Sensitive information on laptop. CB. Well, the other one. Me. That's my wife's laptop. CB, give me that one. It's perfect for me. Me, at this point I was fuming, but this person is a close neighbor and friend to my mom. Me, I can't give you my wife's laptop. She bought it. It's hers. I go return your laptop from where you bought it. CB, they will not refund me. They said it's my fault for not checking it before buying it. Mind you, she bought it secondhand. Me, uh, well, it is your fault, but I have to go. But good luck with that. 
slammed the door while she started to talk again. But I really didn't have time to deal with her crazy today. These people, how entitled are they think I can just give away or lie to my job? TLDR, neighbor brought laptop for repair, turns out her laptop is dead, wants me to give her my work laptop and lie at my work that I lost it or someone stole it so I can give it to her, then wants my wife laptop. I mean, hello, what is the urgent here? Nobody needs a laptop to play on. The kids can play with their toys in the yard or something. On to the third story, shared by you slash DrCow69. Girl doesn't bring a present, gets mad for not getting one. So we have had this secret Santa event for about 3 years now, where everyone got a present near Christmas. Everyone in the class had to do it, however this one girl kept going on about how she didn't have money and didn't want to spend anything on strangers. Obviously, her name was removed from the hat and she didn't have to get anyone a present. It's the last day of school and time has come for Secret Santa. It was great, everyone was happy with what they got and it was a nice atmosphere where everyone shared cookies and sweets. All was great until that one girl asked, in a very angered and confused voice, Um, where is my present? She was expecting a present without giving one back. The teacher responded, Uh, you were taken from the list since you didn't participate in the Secret Santa, you don't get a present. You could start seeing tears in her eyes as she looked at her classmates enjoying the delicious treats. But that's unfair! Why do I have to spend money to get present? It's not a present if I have to pay for it! To clear some things up, this is set in a high school and the girl isn't from a poor family. She was very bratty and always looked down on people as if she was in charge. I think her dad owned a company and spoiled her and she later moved into a private school but because at a certain point, no one wanted to be friends with her. Wow, talking about cheap man, the girl is not even remotely poor, in fact she's freaking loaded. On to the fourth story, shared by you slash Maple Syrup 420. The story of how my great uncle pulled the reverse you know on his beggar wife and children. So my great uncle was this super cool dude. Air Force worked on the fire service and on the rails. Took a 1929 car and redid it when he was 80. Basically every little kid's dream because of his stories and stuff. Anyways, great uncle had begun to have health issues in his older years. This made him less active and therefore at home more which made him grouchy. His wife and kids began openly discussing in front of him how they couldn't wait for him to die. How they wanted him gone so they could sell his stuff for money. How they knew he had a big inheritance waiting for them and they wanted it ASAP. They insisted on speaking where they knew he could hear him saying things like I want XYZ car or I want his war medals and just demanding crap from him. While he would know what their demands were, but they weren't balls enough to ask him themselves. Well, I'm just sitting here in the other room next to the uncle hearing all of this and he turns around to me and goes, that's what they think. Minutes those cretins start wishing me dead, I rewrote my will and none of them are in it. They have my money. I'm giving my wife enough to live off a year. The rest is for my funeral and charities of my choice. Well, uncle died later that year at 98 years old. It was a crap storm because everyone was expecting to get hundreds of thousand each and there wasn't one of them who got a dollar. My great aunt got something like five grand. My kids didn't get anything. He bought himself the most expensive casket the funeral home had sold and a mausoleum for just him. I love that man. Good lord this blew up. To answer some questions, I'm not sure how he managed to exclude the wife. I guess it wasn't a total exclusion as she got the house which she sold to move in with her leech but offspring and some cash but it definitely wasn't what it could have been. They were pissed. The next family reunion included a montage of all the family members lost in the two years since the last one and his family refused to include him. They contested the living hell out of the will because he intentionally didn't add any children in it. There wasn't much they could go on. Plus, he'd actually snuck out one of those senior transport buses to the law office to do it so a lawyer was involved. I think in these kinds of situations, anybody would have done the same. What kind of family would wish you dead ASAP so they can have your inheritance? On to the fifth story shared by you slash GJRunner5, my mother's dryer. 
I took my 70 years old mother, who has been paralyzed for more than 20 years to a my neighborhood garage sale at a local wealthy gated community, which only does one garage sale for one day every year. The paralyzed thing doesn't matter, except to provide an accurate picture of the situation. After going around the entire area, which treats it almost like a huge neighborhood barbecue and block party, we ended up at a house and has a dryer for sale. We overhear the owner of the dryer, who is selling it for 150 bucks, explaining that his daughter bought it, but got it home and realized it was gas and she and her new husband had electric. It was originally 600 bucks or so, but they never got around to returning it and asked her dad to just unload it. It still had the cellophane protecting it, the easily scratch bits. And when I look inside, it had the cellophane across the drum with the manual still in the plastic wrapping. This thing had never even been plugged in. There's a man trying to argue the seller down to 25 bucks. Initially, he walks up to the guy and says something along the lines of, You'll never get rid of this. No one buys the rider use. He's really loud and persistent about it too. This driver is over years old. No one is going to give you anything for used dryer. You're going to have to pay to have it hauled anyway, etc. I don't know how to express this well, but the guy is really being a jerk about it. My mom checks out the dryer with no real intent to buy. Money was really tight. And she is not a jerk who is going to offer a ridiculous low ball offer like the other guy. I have about 50 bucks on me and she has about 20 bucks. I'm waiting until the other guy leaves to ask if I can buy it but bring money back the next day. My parents' dryer of 35 years had finally broken down and my dad had been driving clothes from the washer to the local laundromat and drying them for a few times a week. They really need a dryer. The seller looks over and sees mom sadly looking at a dryer with a jerk still on her heels ask her if she is interested. She says, thank you but I only have 20 bucks, it's a really nice dryer though. The seller says sold and shakes her hand. He says he's happy to deliver it because he has a flat trailer and it's no big deal. Hell, he'll even hook it up for her. The jerk is furious. He ups his bid to 75 bucks. The man looks dead him in the eye and says, I sold it to this nice lady here. My mom is trying really, really hard to not burst into tears. My mom gives the man her address and he indeed delivers it and hooks it up for her. My dad is thrilled and asks how much for the dryer. The man says, one hug. He gives my mom a big hug and refuses her money, my dad's and mine. I have the feeling that if the jerk had just politely offered any amount of money, the seller would have accepted it. He really just wanted to get rid of the dryer that was taking the valuable real estate in his garage. Sometimes it really does pay to be nice, smiley face. Ugh, I was not prepared for that heartwarming ending. Seriously, I'm so glad that it worked out so well for Opie's mom though. It's wonderful when you're in the right place at the right time. And the seller sounds like such a great guy. On to the sixth story shared by you slash curlygirly420. Why can I take your bed and you sleep on the couch? A few years ago, a workplace acquaintance called me around midnight sobbing that her parents had kicked her out because they didn't like her boyfriend and she needed some place to stay for a few days while she sorted it out. I, being a young and naive fool, offered up my place a one bed and one bath apartment that she had been to before. She arrived about two hours later, her car filled to bursting with all her belongings I knew immediately I had made a mistake offering up my place that she had no intention of staying just for a day or two. But it being 2am and me being spineless, I decided to just let her stay the night and tell her that she needed to find another place in the morning. I gave her the go ahead to use my shower and did what I could to make the couch into a comfy bed. She got out of the shower and she saw I had made a bed on the couch in the living room whereas my dog's crate is also set up. Her, I don't like dogs, can you put him outside? Me, uh, well, I don't have a yard and it's 20 Celsius outside, so no. But he will be in his crate all night and won't bother you. Her, can you just put him on your balcony? Me, no, he can sleep in my room tonight though. Her, it will take too long to move his crate into your room. I'll just sleep there and you can take the couch. Me, oh, he can just sleep on bed with me, it's no big deal. Her. Why can't I take your bed and you sleep on the couch? I would rather sleep in a bed. Me, uh, yeah, I would too. So I'm going to sleep in my bed in my apartment. Her, 
I don't want to sleep on the couch. Me, look, it's almost three in the morning. You can either sleep on the couch or find a hotel. Her, well, I want the bed tomorrow. Me, uh, well, we will talk about tomorrow. The next day at work, she referred to my apartment as our apartment, and I told her she needed to find somewhere else to stay. She proceeded to ask me for money to rent a hotel room. No, and told me she liked my shower products. And I should give her the extra she saw I kept under my bathroom sink as a consolidation gift. No, she ended up moving back with her parents, who apparently didn't kick her out, but had just told her that if she and her boyfriend live at their house, they needed to contribute to the bills. Ugh, I wouldn't put it past her to have planned to take your bed and on the second night have the boyfriend come to stay in her bed, and then you'd have two roommates and no bed. On to the seventh story shared by you slash soap in my eyes. Found a wild one on the high sea. I'm a scuba driver and do the odd commercial job here and there. Yesterday, a fella dropped his wallet overboard his yard and called me frantically, begging me to retrieve it immediately. I was in the same bay after just completing another job. I told him I charge 80 bucks for this kind of stuff. He responded was, yeah, yeah, whatever, just hurry. I went down and found it in 10 minutes or so. He made the mistake of trying to hustle before I handed it to him. His argument was that I found it so quickly, so he's going to give me only 20 bucks. I was totally baffled. As he told me to hurry, I wasn't going to entertain this, so I just laughed, threw it over my shoulder into the water, and just slapped on my boat. His face was priceless. <laughs> what? He owns a freaking yacht, and yet still tries to skip on stuff like that. Plus, losing one's wall is such a pain in the butt because all of the documents you need to replace that 80 bucks is actually a bargain. On to the final story shared by you slash Andrew Wires, literal choosing beggar. There was this woman in my old neighborhood. I'd give her a dollar or two sometimes. I felt sorry for her because she had a kid he used to drag around. She got used to it, so she started knocking on my door daily. I was okay with her giving a dollar in the street, but knocking on my door was not okay. Every time she knocked, I would decline giving her money until she stopped opening the door altogether. One night I was returning from home and I saw her through the corner of my eyes coming towards me. I pretended I didn't see her, opened the door, walk inside and close it. She started knocking on the door aggressively. Me, uh, hey, what's going on? CB, hey man, I need money. Me, look, I'll give you money sometimes on the street when I can spare it, but you can't go knocking on my door. CB, please, I need it. You're one of the only good guys around here. Me, okay, here's two bucks, but never knock on my door again. CB looks at the two bucks disappointed. What's this? I have to buy medicine for my child. She always said that the kid is fine. I need at least 10 bucks. Me, I pause for a minute, so it's not enough then. CB, now I need 10 or more. Me, okay, see. I extended my hand to her, and she gave back the two bucks, probably expecting me handling her a larger bill. I said, okay then, bye, and closed the door. Never gave anything to her again. For your information, she wasn't homeless, and she had a husband. Don't know much beyond that. Good grief, that is crossing a line. It's annoying enough on the streets, but at home? Seriously, that's creepy as hell. Before you know it, they will break into your home and taking your money. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Dang Doggo appreciates your time. If you enjoy the content and want to see more of us, stay tuned and subscribe. And don't forget to smash that like button and ring the bell or Doggo will cry. Also, you can always tell us your friendly neighbor Doggo your experiences in the comment section. I will catch up with you guys later in the next video.